NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, presents Aeronautics and Space Report. This rock came from the moon, returned by the Apollo 11 crew as they became the first men to explore the lunar surface. It has been found that the lunar material is much older than expected, probably as old as three to four billion years. Although similar in appearance to some earth rocks, their chemical makeup is extremely unusual. Scientists are now eagerly awaiting the return of material from a different site to start unraveling the questions raised in this brand new scientific field. Assigned to this mission, the crew of Apollo 12, astronauts Pete Conrad, Alan Bean, and Dick Gordon. Conrad will be command pilot for the 10-day round trip. Born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, this will be his third space flight. He flew eight days in Gemini 5 and again for three days in Gemini 11. With him on Gemini 11 was astronaut Dick Gordon, shown here during one of two times he worked outside the craft in space. Gordon will be command module pilot for Apollo 12. Born in Seattle, Washington, he was winner of the Bendix Trophy race from Los Angeles to New York in 1961, establishing a new speed record. Traversing the lunar surface with Conrad, Alan Bean, his first space flight. Born in Wheeler, Texas, Bean was a Navy test pilot for several years before joining NASA. Together, the three will fly to the moon. And while astronaut Gordon orbits in lonely vigil awaiting their return, Conrad and Bean will descend slowly to an area called the Ocean of Storms, approximately 600 miles from where Apollo 11 touched down. After landing, they will photograph, explore, sample, and set up scientific experiments. At the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Apollo 12 Flight Director Jerry Griffin talks about the mission. The Apollo 12 flight plan is very similar to the Apollo 11 flight plan in many ways. However, there are two rather extreme differences. One is the length of time that we will be on the lunar surface, 32 hours on this mission as opposed to only 20 hours on Apollo 11. And we will be doing two extravehicular activities. The second activity will be very ambitious in that we will be walking quite a ways from the spacecraft. And toward the end of that, we hope to find the surveyor spacecraft and retrieve some samples from it. As planned now, the two astronauts will walk some 1,100 feet from their landing craft to Surveyor 3, an unmanned investigator which landed on the moon about two and a half years ago. Conrad and Bean have spent many hours on the ground familiarizing themselves with Surveyor. If possible, they will return pieces of the spacecraft to Earth so that scientists can take a first-hand look at the long-term effects of the lunar environment. Boosting the Apollo 12 crew off launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, Saturn V, 3,000 tons of fuel, electronics, and sophisticated rocketry. The Saturn V is unequaled in power. The only major piece of hardware to travel round trip to the moon is the command module. It houses the men and their earthly requirements against the hostilities of space. The lunar module, a combination braking rocket and launch pad, half for landing, half for taking off. Inside, buttons, switches, computers, and controls. Apollo 12, men, lunar lander, command ship, rocket. All ready for this country's second moon landing. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration presents Aeronautics and Space Report. This is an artist's concept of a lifting body. 
It is believed these wingless craft hold great promise as future reusable space shuttles, able to fly a mission, re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, and land like an airplane. Tests are being conducted jointly with the Air Force at NASA's Flight Research Center in California. Shown here is the HL-10, one of several lifting body designs, just before being dropped from the wing of a B-52. The drop is made some 45,000 feet above the Mojave Desert. Shortly after launch, the pilot ignites a four-barreled rocket engine and the lifting body soars to almost 80,000 feet at better than 1,000 miles per hour to simulate a return from space. NASA began work on the lifting body concept about 12 years ago. Starting with drawings and then models of a cone cut in half, engineers blunted the nose of the cone to help withstand the searing heat of re-entry. Fins and control surfaces were added to make the craft stable and maneuverable. Although at present the flights last only a few minutes, they are significant, for they are proving that flight without wings is possible. The stubby-looking lifting bodies are the forerunners of vehicles that may one day be hurled by rocket into space, perform their mission, and then land on Earth like an airplane. This 106-foot-high Delta rocket recently was used to launch another in the series of orbiting solar observatories, OSO-6. The latest Sun Watcher is now in a near circular orbit some 350 miles above the Earth. In this distortion-free position, it can be aimed with accuracy at thousands of points on the Sun to study solar flares and sunspots close up. Shown here before launch, this is what the 640-pound OSO looks like. It is made up of two major sections. The upper part is a semicircular sail with two experiments and always faces the sun. The lower half is called the wheel. Carried here are the scanning experiments and basic support equipment for the spacecraft. Because OSO-6 was launched during one of the times of greatest solar activity, it is possible that the information it returns will give us the best understanding so far about solar radiation storms that affect the Earth's environment. To track and measure the distances to satellites as they travel through space, NASA uses lasers. After predicting where the spacecraft will be at any given time, telescope-mounted lasers swing into position and their pulses of light lock on and track the orbiting craft aided by computers. Retro reflectors like these mounted on the spacecraft bounce the light back and the satellite's position can be precisely determined and the distance measured simply by measuring the time it takes the beam to go to the satellite and return. By tracking spacecraft using laser systems, scientists have found they can measure the distance to the spacecraft within three or four feet. This same technique can also be used to make precise measurements between locations here on Earth even across oceans, with the same degree of accuracy. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.